right, five minutes after 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Nice-looking Wednesday morning. Robin, we spent last year, I guess it was last year, and part of the year before, we spent that time, much of it, at least our Saturdays, driving to different state parks around the state and uh, getting to learn all about the different things in our state park system. And, gosh, we learned a lot, didn't we? And I think we came away with more questions than answers, seeing all those natural habitats and... And now we have books we should have had that whole time. Uh, and in the studio, a young lady who's going to talk about these books, she is involved with these books. Uh, she compiled one, wrote and illustrated one, and edited one. Um, let me tell you about these books. Uh, they have to do with Florida. First of all, the one she wrote and illustrated is The Field Guide to Critters of Florida Springs. Now, this is the one that would have come in really handy. Because when we, when we were out there, we would say, what the heck is that? Does that is that from outer space? What is that thing? Uh, look at look at some of these pictures. You illustrated this. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, Sandra Poucher is in the studio, looking pretty, and uh, she's also here to talk about the taming of the. All right, Robin and I disagree. Sloth or slew? Slough. Slough. See, she's right every time. <laughs> Robin is always right. All right, the taming of the slough: a comprehensive history of Peacock Springs. I'm going to learn so much today, Robin. And then the other one is the speleological and karst glossary. I'm pretending I know what that means, <laughs> of Florida and the Caribbean, or is it Caribbean? <laughs> I have so many things I need to have corrected here. Uh, and is that is that about cave diving? Spell? It, it's, Spell. it's a comprehensive glossary. It's terminology from cave diving, hydrology, critters. Okay. Um, there's a there's a story behind that book. All right. So, Sandra, uh, it's an honor to have you here. I want the listeners to know that in addition to being here, uh, you will also be at the library. You're part of the Author's Feast, the 2013 Book Feast, I guess is what it's called, not the Author's Feast. You're not eating. You're <laughs> They're not being <laughs> we're, we're, no, we're, not. We're devouring your writing, uh, <laughs> and you will be there on April 13th at the Marion County Public Library headquarters. Lee um, Schwartz. Schwartz, thank you. I almost said the wrong last name. Lee Schwartz <laughs> introduced us to your books, and now we're being introduced to you. And you got a long list of credentials, so rather than reading them, let me just turn around and say, Hi, Sandra, good morning. Hi, good morning. How nice, are you? Nice to see you. It's nice to see you, too. And it was a fun comment. She said the, the camera's nice and low. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want it too high. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Right. I knew what she meant. Yeah. I know. You're a manly man. <laughs> All right. So, so let's see. Where do we start with these things? Well, let me just start with this. What I said in the opening is absolutely true. You know, Robin and I are kind of stuck in this cave. This is our spelunking right here. <laughs> yeah. we, we spelunk in, in the uh, Cascades Cave called WOCA. And so last year, as it, we did some paintings, long story short, and... I have a dog. Mm -hmm. So you can't bring a dog everywhere, but the state parks allow you to bring dogs. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gave us an opportunity to see so many of these great places. So I, we didn't go everywhere. We went maybe as far north as the Georgia State Line, which at one time we went over the line. We made a mistake. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> and, and maybe as far south as halfway between Orlando and Miami. So there's still a large part that we didn't see. And, and what that has to do with what you're here about is that there are so many questions and and you go, you know what you do you go to these parks and you see those erected signs uh -huh. and you read all that stuff uh -huh. and and you try to absorb as much of it as possible so well thank you for coming in <laughs> so do you, do you have a title i mean uh, i mean you do you have a like are you a spelunker or something um or? no no actually my husband and i pursue caving and cave diving as a as a hobby. Okay it's, okay. it's it's very difficult to make a living in that. We only know a couple of people who've actually made a living. Do we have caves in Florida that are not filled with water? Can you just because I don't want to dive, but um, I'd love to crawl. Up in up, <laughs> up near Tallahassee. Oh really? There's a yep. There's Mariana State Park, and it has dry caves that you can walk through, and you can camp there. It's a really nice park. Is it is it lit in any way? Uh, yes. Okay. The longer How, caves are. But is it lit naturally, or is it? No, no. Okay. No, so somebody sure. put in some fluorescent lights mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. Well, that's kind of fun. Yeah. So it's safe for a guy like me? Can yep. I, am I going to bump my head? Yep, you'd enjoy it. Uh, you <laughs> might bust your head. You're pretty <laughs> tall. <laughs> you might have to crouch down a little bit. All right, so now that's that's really only one of the... Now, what is Karst? Karst Glossary, what Karst, is that? Karst is the, the land that's underneath us right now. Karst is a porous limestone. Um, it's It's... Water has eroded through it and made holes and voids and gaps, and that's where we get our caves and our water-filled caves. It's what contains our aquifer, where our drinking water comes from. It's a specific type of How many of aquifers land. do we have? We have one, the Florida. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's separated by different Separated areas. by different, yeah, different, and different types of So geology. there might be some, yeah, some rock mm -hmm. and then more water, but yes. it's all part of the same aquifer. Pretty much, yes. Are there animals living in the aquifer? Yes, there are. 
there are there are little teeny cave monsters. They're they're tiny. Cool. They're, I mean, maybe that big. Yeah. <laughs> if you're lucky. You just sold a few um, filters. Some cray, <laughs> some crayfish can get to about yay big. Really? really? Um, By the way, for the listeners, yay is about four inches. Yay, yeah. <laughs> Down in the hollow over there. But but they're <laughs> they're um completely white. They have no no pigmentation at all. They can't see. They do have sensory little antennas and their bodies wow. are, have sensory things so they can sense pressure in the water movement so that's how they manage to find food they're mostly near the entrances where things fall in oh or okay get dropped in uh-huh and as things fall in and decompose they that's where they get their meals from so are the springs like silver springs is that the exit of the aquifer that would be one of the openings yep so that's the exit where's mm-hmm. the entrances all under us all under us that's why it's so and so important to make sure that when you fertilize or put anything out only so much goes the correct amount goes in okay. because anything extra just goes right down through that porous limestone and it's up in that water and that's also our drinking water it's all mm-hmm. connected does the level of the aquifer rise and ebb and flow like like the tides do in the ocean now, it's not tidal but you can watch it rise and fall when like in peacock springs i had a lady that worked up there told me that when the farmers all started pumping for their for irrigation you could watch the water level fall Oh my God! Oh. But it would come back up, and oh. it rises and falls with with dr- with rain and drought. And oh I really? Mean, yeah. Really? But she said it was really interesting. You knew when they were watering because mm-hmm. you you just could watch it over a period of time just fall about a foot. And is Peacock Springs one of the areas where people go to scuba dive? It's it's specifically for cave diving. It's, oh okay. It's, but I mean, you can you're welcome to go there and visit. It's a fascinating place. That's and the taming of the slough book, right? Yes, yes. Now where is Peacock Springs? It's up north in North Florida near a place called Luraville. Okay. Which okay. was named after uh, a young. Lady lady that perished in a school boarding school fire. Laura, oh. Laura Irvine. Yeah. I just mm-hmm. opened her headstone. Oh. Yep. Yep. She but died in 1888. Wow. It's a beautiful, beautiful part of old Florida. There's old cemeteries up there. Very mm-hmm. nice people. Um, several communities. Mayo. What the heck is this mm-hmm. thing? <laughs> what is that? Is that, a, is that a, a, a That's one of the very first diving apparatuses that was created oh. a long, long time ago. <laughs> what page are you on? I need to. I'm I need on. To I'm show on page to, forty-seven. Show well, that, that person has a booty. Let here. me tell you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Got the booty. <laughs> it's like they're wearing knickers. Yeah, yeah I don't there know you if go. I'll pick Bigger. up on the camera. <laughs> you have to get the book. But that you have is, to get the book. Yep, you have to get the book. <laughs> All right. So, so you are, are now. Help me out here. So you. Is your husband Michael? Yes. That's your husband. Okay. So, are you and your? Is this your profession? You, you no, no, no. Mike, Michael is actually the um, the supervisor of the Ocala Electric Utility. Oh, really? And and uh, and loving it. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. Very good at it. And I create electronic maps for the property appraiser's office. So, oh, so wow. we have completely separate oh, wow. work <laughs> and and play lives. Yeah. Electronic <laughs> maps of the property appraiser. That's mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow, how long have you been doing that? Mm, about six years. So does that kind of intertwine a little bit with what we're talking about? Not really. Not at all? <laughs> so, I mean, you, but I mean, you, you create a map and you don't say, wait a minute, you can't build a house well, there, there's a cave under that. Um, no, we, we don't actually make that call. That would oh, okay. be, that okay. would be uh, other people that make those decisions. But okay. um, the maps that we do create when we do cave and cave diving maps and surveys, we are able to provide those to the state. That's why we don't make money, because we don't sell them. We actually provide those to the state. Right. So if there was a huge development planned for somewhere, we can say, now now look, you know, there's there's stuff right under the surface here. You might want to be careful about this. Mm-hmm. And sometimes developers go, oh, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll keep that in mind. And other times they go, eh. <laughs> did you did you guys study caves like in college or something like that? No, it's it's one of those passions that sort of grows on you. You know, somebody mm-hmm. takes you into a cave and you think, oh, that's crazy. Who's going to want to go underground in the dark? Right, right, right. And right. you go in and it's just there's something about it. It's just spectacular. It's serene. It's there's no monsters. Well, we watched. Let's scary. see, where were we? <laughs> we were up in North Florida. Um, Oh my goodness! What was the place, Robin? And they had some. They had a string, a, like a line. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And it went under the. And it's basically so, told divers, please start early in the day, so they get you <laughs> out early. Right. Yeah. Right. They had and, a rope that they had to and, follow. And uh-huh. you could look actually from where we were. You could look through a little tiny opening in the rock, and you could see them in. I guess the first part of the cave. Mm-hmm. You know, you could see through there, and, and it was but, very cool. But I was I was afraid for them. I'm always afraid for people who go cave dive because you hear these horrible stories of people who get well, the, lost the 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 rate of of accidents has fallen incredibly we have a very 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 extensive training that we undergo mm-hmm. and i mean it's 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 can it's several levels you start off with open water diving right you don't just jump into cave diving so you start off with open water diving and then you go into an intro to cave which just kind of fills you out and sees how you like it right, right. you may 
not like it. Well, Some you people can go be in co- what's what's it called? Mm-hmm. We don't like elevators. Claustro- claustrophobia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. you and could be of, stuck, right? A lot of people right? find out mm-hmm. that they're claustrophobic. And then there's an, an intermediate mm-hmm. level, and then there's a full cave level, mm-hmm. and then there's advanced training after that. There's you know, there's rebreather training for a specific equipment, and I mean it's just it's really advanced. I'm going to ask a question that everybody else looks at me like I'm an idiot when I ask. Uh-huh. Now you can you're you're entitled to look at me like an idiot, <laughs> but you would be the one who who knows. And if you tell me so, I'm going to believe it. If you went down into Silver Springs mm-hmm. and into one of those big swells where you can actually see like a three-foot area of sand just mm-hmm. kind of always bubbling, right? Uh-huh. Could you swim through that and eventually get to a cave? I don't think so. I think those are just little bubblers coming up through fissures in the limestone and the sand on top is Okay. Is so, so, so there's I, there. It, it would there'd be a hole. So the the caves you're swimming in are actually the aquifer. Yes, yes, it is. And that water comes from the aquifer, yes, but does. there's no big opening there. There might be underneath. Okay. But these are just maybe fissures through maybe a layer of rock. Okay. But um, if it if it's a large enough, the sand would fall in or or blow completely out. So. When when you did yeah. your uh, research to the field guide to the critters in the springs, did you find after you compiled the book that some of them became extinct? No, not yet. Thank, mm-hmm. thank goodness. Well, we spoke to a guy the other day uh-huh. who had an article came out yesterday in National Geographic, and he's one of the guys who are going to create de-extinction. Uh-oh. He's going <laughs> to take them back, bring them back. All right, so what did you find? You found a lot of fish, mm-hmm. right? Now, fishermen probably know all about fish, right? But I, I look at fish, and I don't know, you know, I, I might know a goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> so all these fish, stump knocker is a fish, Robin. Mm-hmm. Oh, I never knew that. Uh-huh. I just thought it was a restaurant. It's a, it's a form of brim. Yeah. And th- do we have a lot of them around stump knockers? Uh, is there uh, a yes. reason for the name? <laughs> do we really? In the Whitlacoochee, <laughs> yes. So there's a lot. And is it, a, I mean, do you like to eat fish? Is oh, it, gosh, yes. Is it, a, is, it a, is, it a, is it a good food? I mean, do we like to eat that one? Um, I don't know about brim. They're, they're a pan fryer, and there's a lot of bones in those. So I don't really think people like those. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a catfish girl. I like fried catfish. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that's really good. Mm-hmm. B- spotted sucker. Uh, bowfin. Oh, that's a freaky looking one, huh? That's Florida my favorite gar- fish. Now, what are these? Are these all watercolors that you did? No, no. They're pencil drawings. They were on 8.5 by 11 paper. And wow. we had to shrink them down and, um, in order for them to be published. They, they made them somewhat dark. The pencil illustrations are quite a bit lighter. But you're very mm-hmm. good as an artist, mm-hmm. obviously. You. Oh, you have uh, snails in there, too. Mm-hmm. Now, what should we do if we see the snails? Do they hurt the gardens, or do they help? Or? Oh, oh, land snails are yeah. a little different. Those are slugs. And, um, okay. And you know, I'm not really sure what their role is in the garden. I know my grandmother used to put uh-huh. out beer, and <laughs> okay, and they would crawl in and drink the beer and die. <laughs> <laughs> but then the, the snails in the water, what do <laughs> they do? <laughs> um, the ones, the ones in the water, I, I think they're just eating the you know bacterial growths and things on the on the uh-huh. rocks. We never find them far, far back in the caves. Those are oh. more at the entrances or oh. in the open water. Oh, okay. And the further back in the cave you go, is there less fish back there? Oh, or? yes, yeah. There's, there are cave fish in Alabama and Mexico. Mm-hmm. Those are the only places that I know of with the blind cave fish that actually live in the caves. The other fish that are in the caves follow you in. And there's, oh. there are several species that will actually follow cave divers with their lights. Really? Because when we light up the little critters, it's easy prey for the fish. They're like, oh, oh this is great. And they <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Corn, you know, they're in there. And do they get <laughs> stuck in there then when you come out? No, they'll follow us back. They follow you back, back out. So some caves we've been told to cover our... This is in Mexico mostly. We've been told cover your light until you get back past the cavern zone right, and then it's right. safe but but i've seen the fish follow us that oh, same yeah. thing by the way happens to me with ducks <laughs> <laughs> whenever i go someplace with ducks they follow me i don't know why it <laughs> might be the might be the bread i'm not there sure the king of the ducks <laughs> um the, the uh, books that we're talking about here are the taming of the slew mm-hmm. a comprehensive history of peacock springs and uh, we're not going to really be able to be fair to the books completely a field guide to the critters of florida springs Florida's Springs and the Speleological and Karst Glossary of Florida and the Caribbean. I gotta remember that word karst. Because I need a few tools to make me look smarter. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, I, I love this. I mean this is uh Cave for Pay. I just happen to open to that. What is that? <laughs> what is Cave for Pay? <laughs> The practice of leading people into caves for payment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Leading you know, or leaving? <laughs> you have to... Leading, leading. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. The there practice of leading. <laughs> Make sure you said the right word. Do you get paid way. to do this? To do what? To lead, are you a cave? What do you, what no, do you call? I'm not a guide. No. You're not a cave pa- mm-hmm. paid caver? No. A cave flower is a long, curving deposit of gypsum on a cave surface. What's mm-hmm. gypsum? 
Gypsum is another rock. It's another formation. Um, there's depositional rocks, which when water drips through the cave, different things wash out, and it forms different formations in the caves. So what? I, how, how did this all happen for you with the books? Did you? I mean, you wrote some, you illustrated some, and you edited some. The, the first one, The Taming of the Slough, was the first book I wrote, and all new cave divers learn about Sheck Exley. He was the premier cave diver uh, was? education. He passed away in 1994. Oh, wow. Um, he was also a math teacher up in North Florida, so, you know, tell your kids. You never know what kind of lives your teachers are leading at night. You, you yeah. Speak, treat them with respect. <laughs> he, um, he was a very prolific writer, very, very interested in educating people. He saw lots of people dying in the caves in the early part of the sport, and, mm -hmm. and uh, he wanted to make sure that this didn't happen again. So he helped work with accident analysis. He wrote articles about the caves. He, he really tried to protect and and encourage people to understand the caves. Yeah, yeah. This was a book that he had put together and never finished. He, he died in, like I said, 1994. Oh, wow. He had written that a long time ago, though. That was written in his earlier days, and his voice is quite different than his other books. Mm -hmm. And he left extremely extensive notes on how he wanted this book to be completed. So I took his notes, and my good friends, um, Mark and Annette Long, have most of his papers in his, from his estate and they let me go through his papers and go through all the articles and all the books and everything that he had and I was able to get with the experts around me Tom Mount, um, Tom Morris, my husband various people helped me to finish this book and write how Sheck might have expected it to be written. Wow, that's and, uh, a, uh, wow! What a nice tribute! And it is a history book of that of that state park and the cave diving in that state park. And wow. that is extremely important because sometimes people they don't go through the levels you went through. <laughs> they feel that if they're an open wa water diver and they can go to somewhere, get a get a flashlight and, and, and go and, in and go in mm -hmm. there, but they don't realize because I know you know most of the people that I know who are cave divers, they're very safe. They'll bring their their lines mm -hmm. and hook them up so they uh, don't get lost mm -hmm. because a few people have attitudes and what you're doing is bringing those attitudes to the surface That's so correct. they won't die. Yeah, yeah. My, my favorite saying is it's no fun if you can't come out and brag about it. So yeah. you definitely want to survive. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Do you take photographs when you're yeah, We do. We, we, yeah. we did video for a while. We were doing the videos and um, producing videos and that was a lot of fun. I really uh -huh. enjoyed that. But people don't want to pay. They want you to give them a video for three dollars and it costs oh. hundreds of thousands of dollars for the equipment and, yeah. and the training and you're risking your life sure so yeah they want to go on youtube and watch it for free right <laughs> yeah, exactly right? uh oh, well, this is a fascinating set of books here and you will be showing all of them over at the book feast happening at the Ocala Library headquarters on April 13th, which is a Saturday. Uh, and as much information as you have to share, I mean, if all of the other authors have this much, we're going to be there all day long uh -huh. <laughs> talking to all of you, and you've got to say the same thing over and over again. When, when, um, I have a question for you about species. When we hear about invasive species, like you hear about these uh, pythons and stuff in the Everglades, if we lose the battle, and they are there for a century. Mm -hmm. Do we then consider them native? After, like, after something's been here long enough, do we change our mind about the word you know, invasive? I, I don't know about that because the armadillo is supposed to be an invasive species. But they've really? been here for so long, most people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. oh, so, wow. uh, you know, I'm not really sure how that would... But I know that the invasive ones are usually so damaging that like the pythons eat everything and we've all yeah. seen the photos of mm -hmm. the python with a wrapped deer. around the well the deer yeah. and with the alligator where the alligator's eating the python and right. it's wrapped around the alli you know right. Right. so i'm i i think those are they're gorgeous snakes it's a shame that they're you know Abuse because yeah. people are being yeah. set free of them. Run amok. But yeah, but right, yeah. right. Uh, the uh, I can tell you where I've seen some of these things. I've seen the otters in Rainbow Springs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever seen a round-tailed muskrat. It's, it's interesting you mentioned the otters because what inspired that book was we were on the rainbow uh -huh. and a huge group of Japanese tourists came tubing down the rainbow. Well, their English wasn't very very good and they saw an otter and they kept, you know, what what that, what that? And <laughs> and we didn't really know how to tell them otter. They don't, you know, so we, we said otter and they're otter, you know, what is that? <laughs> and so we said water cat and, uh -huh. and they immediately got it and I thought, gosh, wouldn't, that, wouldn't it be nice if we had a little book? That we could, you know, give give or sell to, yeah, to yeah. So yeah right. Could, you know, they could. Oh, that's what that is. Oh, okay. Cat. I, I don't know do you, Japanese. Now, where do you find <laughs> beavers? Where, where are there beavers? There are actually beavers at Peacock Springs. 
Really? Mm-hmm. I, see, now, is there a way wow. to, to see them? Like we got to go there. From what I understand, they're extremely shy, and they come out very early in the morning. So they're probably gone by the time the park is open at sunrise. Do you know, um, w- the, are you familiar with the trail, the, the bicycle trail from Hawthorne to Gainesville? Yes, yes. Okay, we did that once, believe uh-huh. it or not. It's a 30 mile, it's 15 miles each way. Mm-hmm. We did the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Our butts were really sore. Uh-huh. But, but we started early, mm-hmm. and the first part, the, I guess that's the Gainesville part, right? Yeah. yeah the first part, the Gain- well, from our perspective. Mm-hmm. We went to Gainesville to start. It was very early. The fog was still kind of hanging on the ground. We saw deer. We saw owls. We saw... Right there. I don't yeah, know what else we saw. Right up there. Yeah. I feel like we saw more than that. But anyway, yeah. the, it was kind of cool to see mm-hmm. those animals. And, and maybe that's the secret, huh? Getting out early? Mm-hmm. That could be. That could be. All right. I know people want to say hi to you. Let's go to the phone <laughs> real quickly. Uh, again, Sandra Poucher is our guest. She's got some awesome books here about this place we call home. Uh, A Field Guide to Critters of Florida Springs is the one she wrote and illustrated. The Taming of the Slough, A Comprehensive History of Peacock Springs written by the late Sheck Axley that she put together uh, using his instructions. That's awesome. And then the Speleological and Karst Glossary of Florida and the Caribbean or Caribbean? Speleological. Oh, sp- oh I'm saying that part wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had something right here. Caribbean, Caribbean or Caribbean? Caribbean. Oh, you don't care I've about heard that it both one. ways. Yeah. So spe- tomato, Speleological. <laughs> All right. Uh, and, 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 of course, uh, Sandra will be at the library on the uh, 13th of April. Good morning. Thank you for being patient with us. You're on the air. Yes, good morning. I'm looking forward to the 13th. That ought to be very interesting. Uh, a quick question. Are there any known areas where the aquifer has actually dried up and, let's say, disappeared? Uh, from what I understand, around Tampa and Hillsborough, they have had some oh, problems yeah. with, I don't think the aquifer itself, but the water level has dropped to the point where uh-huh. huge, huge lakes have completely dried up. Right, and, um, right. The aquifer goes all the way up to southern Georgia, right? It goes up through southern Georgia, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, you know, it was interesting when you mentioned about agriculture, when the farmers start watering, they can actually see a level drop. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got this big cattle ranch that wants to be starting up here just north of uh, Ocala here, Mm -hmm. and I don't know, they've got dozens of wells that are going to be kicking in. It'll be interesting to see how fast that water drops, and you never heard that mentioned at any of the meetings that I went to about, Mm -hmm. you could actually see the the, the water levels drop when the farmers started irrigating, so it'll be interesting to see what happens up there and i hope it doesn't but, but we'll see yeah okay thank you i'm sure thank you're you. familiar with that whole thing right mm-hmm. yes yeah and yeah, any you want to say anything about it, or is it um I, I i don't really know enough about what he's planning on doing it yeah. sounds like they're trying very hard to not use up all their water because then they'd have to pay to bring it in and that would mm. be even more expensive so it seems like in his best interest to protect that water resource hmm. but i'm not i'm not sure exactly i think we have another phone call <laughs> no i don't see the light anymore it was, somebody was trying and, and they, i guess they bailed out uh fun interview you're a fun lady when uh, you go on your adventures do you ever come across something that you haven't expected to see um occasionally there'll be an interesting piece of trash like a uh, there's a there's a spring up near Lake City that has a huge huge tractor tire back in the cave and you have oh. to wonder how strong was the water flow to drag this huge huge tractor tire mm-hmm. back into a cave it's a good you know, 60 70 feet into the cave wow and it's on one of the um uh, there's a famous cave filmmaker Jill Heiner and it's on one of her water's journey videos really? there's actually a shot of that tractor really? tire wow. and it's ama- I mean it's a it's huge <laughs> yeah how would you expect that yeah exactly you know? that's incredible water i mean incredible force for it to mm-hmm. You know, pull that. Uh, I don't think anybody any, threw that in there. I think it was pulled in by the. I, any water. writings on the walls? I mean, were these at one time not filled with water? No, no. These are these are pretty much always been filled with. I mean, there was a period of time when the water was much much lower, but that was way 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 back, long 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 time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a few caves that have writing. Wikiwachi has some writing from the mermaids. One of their one of their <laughs> culture, one of their cultural yeah. things is to, uh-huh. to go down as deep as they can and, and write their name. And we don't typically encourage that. We that's yeah. considered no. graffiti, and we just don't c- encourage that in the caves. Mm-hmm. But it is interesting to go to some caves and see the dry caves that are air filled and see um, old old things and you know that have been written a long time ago very but cool very cool uh we're living vicariously through you i don't know if you can <laughs> all right let's squeeze in one more phone call and then we'll we'll uh, have to wrap it up good morning you're on the air uh this is bruce listen i had to take the aerial pictures under ferris bryant all the way from Apalachicola, we across from the east coast out to the, uh, the west coast uh-huh. and i never knew there were so many uh parks in different places like mm-hmm. on the swanee river and uh basically uh, there's a park 
just north of Tallahassee over there. Mm -hmm. I mean, north of uh, west. And I swear there's a mountain there. You stand on top of it, and you look way down at the river, and it looks just exactly like a mountain. It's so high, you think you're in North Carolina. A lot of people don't think about Florida having a mountain. Well, you go up there and go to that beautiful state park up on top of that hill, that yeah. mountain, and it's beautiful. It's a, and it's got all kinds of wonderful places to park mm -hmm. and wonderful places to keep your uh, tents, put your tents in your mobile homes or whatever it might be, you travel. But it's just a beautiful place. And he had me photograph all the way to Tampa, wow. from all the way, the, the east coast to the west coast, and then down to Tampa, and he wanted me to photograph the Key West. I said, <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. I'm getting sore sitting in this plane all day long. <laughs> but I didn't know that the Florida had so many parks honest to believe it's hard to believe people don't realize to take advantage of what we have oh ah, yeah exactly realize. that's exactly it's, right yeah. yeah it's a gorgeous and, state and, and i think part of the fun of these books is that you go out and explore and you know have kind of a field guide it's called a field guide right mm -hmm. that's, all right so a field guide to critters and, and that would be awesome to have a book like this all right thank you bruce Appreciate that. Bruce uh, Milcher, by the way, the <laughs> legendary photographer uh -huh. who did all those underwater photos of Silver Springs. Do you know Bruce? Mm hmm. What was well, I know who he is. Well, <laughs> He's okay. a great guy. I was going to ask you something. Oh, do the do our uh, caves have stalactites and stalagmites? The, the dry ones do, yes. They do? Yes, they do. Are they. Like, do they, does that tell you how old they are or something? Uh, they, they can. Um, there are scientists who can take those and do a core, almost like with a tree. Uh -huh. They can do a core and, and tell how old that is. Wow. They can do that. Wow. wow. You are a fascinating woman. All right. You're so animated. I mean, gosh, the world is lucky to have you. I think we were told that you're going to give away these three books, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So one lucky person will get all three, mm -hmm. uh, and then the other three that we have go back to the library because you've got a, you've got a gig on the thirteenth. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, Sandra is giving away the three books that we talked about: the Field Guide to Critters of Florida Springs, and that's the one that she wrote and illustrated. The Speleological <laughs> and Karst Glossary, uh, which is awesome, and uh, is. of Florida and the Caribbean, Caribbean, oh. and uh, the Training of the Slew. Uh, did, did I do it right? The taming of the Taming, slow. taming. Not true. Slow. <laughs> exactly. Wait a minute. The taming or training? Taming. Taming. Oh, taming. Okay. I and that, wrong. Was, that was actually Shaq's title, The Taming of the Slope. Oh, really? All right. See, I've been reading everything wrong the whole time. <laughs> see, put a pretty w woman in the room, Robin, and I go nuts. That's right. He's a manly man. Good morning. Uh, you've got the books. Who's this? Oh, it's Dee. Thank you very much. Hi, Dee. You're welcome. They'll be waiting for you. Okay, appreciate it. Y'all have a good day. All right, thank you. Sandra, you've been fun. Thank you so much for being in well, the studio. Please be careful, you and your husband, when you go out into those caves. We will. <laughs> do you have a Facebook page? Can we look you up or something? I do have a Facebook page, and we do have a website. It's what is uh, your website? www.cavesurvey.com. Cavesurvey.com. Mm -hmm. All right, and, and we see and your pictures? And it doesn't always display like it should, but <laughs> oh, okay. it's, it's an in-home. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. We well, used Facebook, or we you, used a, a front page to build it, and front page is defunct now. So. Oh, front page was so hard for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Such a, it, I remember that one. Uh, you are a delight. Thank you so much for being well, here you. this morning. And tell you, husband, thank you for keeping the lights on. Uh -huh. <laughs> Appreciate that, too. All right, we'll take a little break, and we'll be right back. We have another in-studio guest. Sandra Stroh is going to tell us how sequestration is affecting Marion Senior Services here in Marion County. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. We'll be right back. Uh, the sound of the bat cracking, the crowd cheering, the smell of overpriced but tasty hot dogs, the memories that will last a lifetime of your first baseball game with little Johnny. Your team wins. It was a great night until you get home. It's 9 p.m. and your wife says you have no water. We have no water. What do you do? What do you do? Rule number one, don't panic. Remain calm. Okay, that's two rules. We don't have time for jokes, funny man. Okay, think back. On the way home, you heard a radio commercial. Mike Scott Plumbing. If water runs through it, we do it. Eureka. You saved the day. You remembered that Mike Scott Plumbing doesn't charge extra for nights, weekends, or holidays. You are a genius. Hey, Mr. Genius, did you remember the phone number? Of course you did. Remember, you're a genius. 352-237-2888. Because at Mike Scott Plumbing, if water runs through...